So, the basic idea is pretty simple. I wanted to make a snare drum using the wood stave technique, but I wanted to set the staves with an angle. So at the end, I would get a spiral shape. To begin with, I need to prepare the staves. So let's cut some wood. Wait a minute. Why the hell would I bother making a snare drum by myself in the first place? Let me tell you the story. I think, as far as I remember, I have always wanted to make my own things. Maybe my father gave me the virus, because he was endlessly dealing with manual work at home. So once I was old enough, I learned how to work the wood and the metal and how to deal with electricity. At the same time, I discovered the music and the music instruments, and I quickly became a big fan of drums. So what could I do to marry my two patients? Making my own drum gear, obviously. I think my first idea was to make a double hit simple drum pedal that was just before discovering the giant step from Sonor, by the way. But my version was a little bit rudimentary, as you can see. The system was working, but it was unusable. <laughs> then I manufactured two pretty looking snare drums. One entirely apple green with some vent holes in the shell and the second one matte black with chrome hardware. Both were making a hell of a noise, but they were sounding like shit. <laughs> I had to admit, I gave it several tries but nothing was working fine or sounded well. So I had to think bigger. Let's do some wood shells. I had chosen to use the stave technique, which is quite similar to the way the wine barrels are made. But I had few problems to solve first. I needed some wood and some tools. About the wood, my father had some cherry planks, which had been drying for several years, Planks that he had cut from a tree a long time ago. Unfortunately, I had no tools to work the wood. So my friend and guitarist, Johan, who was learning the joinery at the time, kindly offered to help me out. And he came back one day with 20 perfectly cut cherry staves, which I quickly glued together. But I still needed to find a solution to make the shells round. I decided to build the lathe by myself starting from a bench saw spindle shaft and using 200mm square steel tubes plus a lot of parts recovered from my father's stock. I succeed to make a perfectly round shell with my homemade tool. I was so proud to finally have made something great by myself. But the excitement of this victory made me doing several mistakes in a row. First, I let the drum shell on the lathe mandrel in winter, then I found the shell partly deformed a few days after. Moreover, I tried to recover the shape after an improvement of my lathe, which resulted to the explosion of the shell and a rain of wood bits inside my workshop. <laughs> so the result was still the same. No good homemade drums, even worse, no drums at all. As I often do, I decided to go harder and bigger. I decided to make an entire drum kit. The choice went for a 3 pieces drum kit with generous dimensions. 24 by 24 inches kick drum, 12 by 10 inches tom tom and 16 by 14 inches floor tom. If you're gonna build your own drum kit, why not do it with some style? My dad had enough cherry planks left. So this time I asked my friend Seb, who is a carpenter, to process them. And he came back one day with a big pile of perfectly cut wood staves. I had 30 pieces for the bass drum and 20 for each tom. I managed to glue all the parts together. My friend Xavier gave me a hand because gathering 30 pieces all together in one time was not easy alone. The gluing went perfectly, now I was having three massive shells to turn. As the shells were thinner, I decided to only turn the outside of them. 
I started with the 12 inches tom, I made a wooden cylinder that I fixed on the lathe mandrel and then I turned it down to the right diameter to be able to slip the tom on it. It went well and then I was able to turn easily the outside diameter and the bearing edges of the tom. In parallel I found some great hardware on a website called sandrum.de. I could then assemble and test my first tom. And the test was very encouraging. The tom sounded great with a huge volume and a round sound. For the first time I could call that a result. But turning the two other dudes sounded like a challenge. I succeeded in turning the floor tom on my lathe. Not very neat, but that worked. Then I set this piece aside, finished it by hand years after, and it's still leaning on the floor of my apartment today, waiting for some hardware. Such a shame. I knew there was no way to turn my bass drum on my lathe. It would have been too dangerous, and I was afraid to explode it as well. So I worked on the bass drum by hand. This took me a long time because I was not working very often on it, but I managed to finish it as well. I bought some gear, assembled it and tested it. And this is very powerful. It takes a bit of practice to be used to the drum pedal as the drumstick is higher, but what a sound! I am still playing today on a hybrid drum set composed of a mix of my home drum shells and my old sonar ones. What I wanted to say at the beginning... Oops, I think I digressed a bit too much, sorry. That's why today I decided to try to make a snare drum again. As to ward off the bad outcome of my first wood snare drum building. As I got great ideas to make a drum shell differently in my head for years now, I couldn't miss the opportunity of trying to put them into practice and thereby increasing a lot the difficulty of the project. But I will tell you about that in the next episode.